A very good morning and thanks for clicking on to the Monday edition of Vogel's European Outlook. It's the 7th of February. Hope everybody has enjoyed their weekend. Back to the grind, of course, once again today for many. And uh, I wanted to actually look at, firstly at the the temperature, the anomaly um, globally during the course of yesterday. Now, I'm assuming this is correct. But uh, this is the, the GFS, CFSR uh, reanalysis chart here for yesterday. And one thing that is very, very noteworthy indeed, and I don't know how often we really see this these days, especially in a much warmer world than, say, even a decade ago, but the average temperature globally yesterday was actually bang on uh, the average of uh, 0.0 Celsius. The Northern Hemisphere, 0, 0.0 Celsius. Uh, the Southern Hemisphere, 0, 0.0 Celsius. Now, this is interesting. The Arctic was minus 1.5 Celsius below normal, which is quite unusual, especially during the winter season. See that you quite often these days see a warmer um, winter in the Arctic and a colder summer in the Arctic. The tropics as well, minus 0 0.1 Celsius as well. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, you know, today we're, we're seeing the average temperature globally, um, a fraction above normal once again. But uh, it's interesting to see just um, these figures here because it's not every day that you see that. Um, and like I say, in a, especially in the world in which we live at the moment here. Let's have a look at the, um, the, UAH temperature here which goes back to the month of January and um, it was um, close to normal um, if you look at this chart here for the month of January here you can see um, just trying to bring this in the better view for you so you can see here at the uh, plus 0 0.03 Celsius above the average here so uh, very close to the, the average um, in terms of the um, lower tropospheric temperature here. But if you notice here in this chart in particular, um, plenty of warmth. Notice where the warmth is located. And I think this is quite quite interesting, actually. Um, although we don't have uh, any great deal of blocking high pressure within the high latitudes at the moment, January of, uh, of 2022, was in fact um, a fraction above normal but notice where the warmth is it's across the uh, north atlantic here where of course the water temperatures are well above normal we've also got across the north pacific and across the northern portion of asia here in particular it was almost all uh, warmer than normal across uh, you know the majority of northern asia during the month of January, but notice something here. We don't have any warmer than normal within the tropics, and that is very interesting indeed. You can see here the warmth generally stacked both across the, the north and across the far south of the hemisphere, but we've got this uh, average to slightly below average temperatures within the tropics. Now, you know, I don't have time to delve into that too much, but it is certainly very interesting to see that type of correlation here. And if you look at the uh, UAH temperature uh, globally, um, of course, we do have a rise in temperature on average here, if you will, since 1979 right through to present day. The, the, the natural trend has been uh, on the increase. There's no, there's no question about that. What is interesting is if you notice every... Uh, super uh, nino that goes off so we had one of course in the late 80s we had one in the late 90s and of course we had one in the mid 2010s and every time a, an el nino goes off it actually sets the, the the global temperature bar that bit higher so therefore it's harder to see the temperature coming down um you know with the with the the La Ninas that succeed. So generally speaking, of course, you increase the global temperature with an El Nino and you decrease the global temperature with a La Nina. And what is quite interesting is if you look at the chart here, we've kind of reached a new peak in terms of global temperature. Of course, every time the the every time we see the the the, the 
the La Nina taking place, you've got a cooling trend globally. Um, and we've, we've seen that back in um, you know, 2017, 2018. We've seen the drop, then we've seen a rise. Uh, and then, of course, with the, with the latest uh, La Nina going off, you see the decrease in temperature. And what, what you would expect to see, I think, as we head towards the spring season, um, the global temperature uh, decreasing. So what I would expect to see is the temperature of the planet going down uh, in the, the next couple of months here. Another interesting aspect, I would say, is that if you look at the CFSV2, only one model, of course, out of the countless models that we have at our disposal these days, Notice something here. Now, of course, we've had two years of La Nina, and the, the CFS V2 is indicating that we've actually got another year of La Nina, if the model is correct. And that would be very interesting. Uh, you know, a third year uh, La Nina, of course, it hasn't been a persistent La Nina the whole time. It has went back up to neutral, but then went back to La Nina. So is Earth's thermostat trying to reset the uh, you know the, the balance here so to speak and, and bring the global temperature down it's going to be interesting to see how much cooling we we'll see with the with the La Nina that we've seen starting to weaken slightly in the last uh, you know a month or so it's going to be interesting to see if there's an atmospheric response to that La Nina uh, as we go towards the spring season and of course eventually into the summer season we'll, we'll look more and more at the spring and summer in the the weeks ahead but certainly i thought it was rather interesting to see um you know the you know the global temperature uh, currently what we've seen back in january and what we're seeing uh, as we go forward here but certainly it would be interesting if we had a third year la nina and uh, like i say we'll, we'll speak about more about that as we go forward here Looking at the current picture, of course, this was the scene I experienced um, on the A9 during the course of yesterday morning. Whiteout conditions, uh, no tracks on the road at all. Pretty bleak. Um, by no means is it the, the absolute worst of experience on the roads. Uh, you know, I've been driving commercial vehicles now for over a decade. And I experienced, of course, the 0910 winter. That was the first uh, that was, in fact, the first um, winter that I experienced driving a truck. Uh, also, of course, experienced the Beast from the East in 2018. Countless other snow events in between that. But certainly yesterday morning was tricky, was uh, a bit uh, iffy in, in stretches uh, yesterday. But by the time I reached um, you know, the A9 going south yesterday, um, it was pretty much all clear here. So... But certainly a, a snowy day across the highlands in particular, not really anything in the central belt, but certainly in the highlands it was a snowy day yesterday. And um, that unfortunately is um, now um, gone. We are seeing warmer air taking place as we go through the course of today. We've got, of course, a system, um, a, a beast of a system uh, just off the Greenland coast. It's expected to deepen to a low of 9.23 millibars uh, between Greenland and Iceland uh, by the time we reach 9 a.m. this morning. So incredible stuff. Um, but we've got, of course, um, ahead of this approaching frontal system, warmer temperatures um, within the uh, throughout the levels of the atmosphere. Um, so the snow itself um, will basically shrink back to the hills once again. But that, that frontal system eventually will push through over the course of the next 24 hours. And then we're back in to um, slightly less colder, but colder air than what we're going to see this afternoon uh, across the north. Uh, always milder across the south. Of course, we had quite a substantial divide in temperature here between the south and the north during the course of yesterday here. But eventually this uh, you know air mass um, gets dragged, uh, pulled in, so to speak. Uh, to the flow and eventually we'll, we'll get colder air back into the UK again and snowfall is likely down even towards low levels as we push towards the middle and, and, and latter half of the this uh, week. Um, you can see here as we go forward that system can eventually uh, can attract just to the north of the British Isles here as you can see uh, much much uh, weaker uh, at 983 millibars but still going to bring wind rain snow 
to the British Isles here as we go forward here um, towards the end of the week here. Looking at the 850 millibar temperatures, here comes the milder this morning and this afternoon. Then eventually we'll start to see the colder air coming back into play once again uh, behind that frontal system. And then, of course, as we go towards the second half of the week, we have got the potential for a brief, very brief 24-hour period of northerly winds and seeing 850 temperatures perhaps below minus 10, especially across the north, but even quite widely, uh, a chilly air mass uh, would uh, present, of course, opportunity for snowfall as well as um, as frosty nights uh, to speak about here. But of course, it's very transient indeed. The westerlies are roaring, polar, uh, polar vortex very strong indeed. Looks as if it's going to maintain strength, if not strengthen further as we go towards the middle portion of the month. No real indication of any change as we go forward here. I'll look at more at that in the next video. But of course, if you like the video, please like, share and subscribe and always hit the bell button for the notifications. Hope you have a great day. Back again tomorrow with more. Bye for now.